Yo, 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 mic check one, two, mic check one, two. Welcome back to the Agassino Zinger Show. We're going to get things cranking up today because it's Thursday and I didn't work out today and I feel fresh and ready to go. So I'm going to play a song for you that I've been banging out, something that you guys should check out. If you haven't been checking it out, you should check it out. I don't care what you think of her. This album's banging. Let's go. Uh. And if in case you're wondering who that is, it's fucking Ariana Grande, a track produced by Pharrell on her album um, Sweetener called Successful. It's banging. I've converted a couple of people already because they're on the fence about, ah, it's Ariana Grande though. Is it going to be any good? Look, music is music, man. I'm one of those kind of people, right? I might look like a raging hipster, but I'm not. I care about the music. If the music is good, I don't care who it comes from. I'm listening to it. I don't care if you're the biggest pop star in the world or you have two followers if the music is good, I'm playing it. And this undoubtedly is fucking good music. It's such it's like vintage NERD. If you if if you like the if you like um if you like nerd or if you like old school like clips productions or you just like you know that kind of era when 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 um when the Neptunes were just smashing it, you know, like the kind of early two thousands, mid two thousands, you're gonna love this. Let's go again. <laughs> It's the surprise. Yeah, so check it out, bro. Before I get taken off YouTube, I'm going to pause it now. Check that out. Um, Ariana Grande's new album is called Sweetener. It's absolutely banging. And if you watched the VMAs the other day, actually, she actually probably had the best performance at the VMAs apart from uh, Travis Scott. So check it out. Uh, album's called Sweetener. It's available on all your regular DSPs, which I've just learned a new word, acronym the other day, uh, digital streaming providers, uh, if you guys are not familiar with it. But yeah, check it out. Ariana Grande's Sweetener. Anyway. Next to the Zinger Show, episode number 98. Welcome back. It's me, your host, Agostino. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me. I am glad to see my friends and um, people all around the world. Uh, big up all the heads who are leaving comments and stuff and um, nice um, thoughts about what I'm doing and leaving me words of encouragement. That's majorly, majorly appreciated. I'm not really a pat on the guy kind of... I'm not really a pat on the back kind of guy. I just do my thing. I think a lot of you should probably notice this. You know, I, I don't really, I don't really, um, I don't really care who's watching or who isn't watching. I just continue doing what I'm doing. Like this thing is quite cathartic for me. It's very therapeutic. Um, I get a lot out of it just mentally in terms of being able to like mentally di um, vomit or verbally digest, verbally vomit all these thoughts that are in my head, right? I'll just, just get them out of my head. So I don't really mind who's watching or isn't watching, but it's nice to hear some people who are watching or having a good time, or find the stuff that I'm talking about informative, or just want to give me a good old pat on the back for doing a good job, all right? I'm not opposed to that. Even though I don't need it, and I'm not looking for it, you know, because if you're growing up, you shouldn't be looking for pats on the back. Just get on with your bloody work, innit? That's what you should be doing. You shouldn't be getting a congratulations because you decided to make a decision. We've got too much of that nowadays, isn't it? It's probably come from that whole, like, everyone gets a trophy thing. People are getting congratulated for making a decision. Oh, congrats. You, well done. Great choice. Great choice. What the fuck are you talking about? He's an adult. You make choices every single day. You know what I mean? Um, overground, underground. Bus or, bus or tube. Boris bike or walk. Everyone makes a choice. Kinder Bueno or Kit Kat. And if you say Kit Kat, I'm going to kill you. But anyway, welcome back to the Excellent Zinger Show with me, your host, Agus Steelers. Episode number 98. We're slowly creeping up to the 100 mark. I'm really proud and happy about it. It's ironic and sad, really, that I'm happy and proud about it because I would have hit 100 a long time ago if I had the same amount of consistency. Since the beginning of the year, I've been trying. I've been basically effectively putting out an average of one podcast a week without missing, maybe missing for three weeks here and there, right? Which has been marked difference from the year previously where it was a bit sporadic. But the fact that I've been consistent and been banging them out is why I've been able to crank up the numbers. And it's not a numbers game, don't get me wrong. I'm not doing it to kind of get to numbers that's going to get me anywhere soon. But it's just the idea of doing something a hundred times. Um, hopefully, the hope is by the by the time it gets to the other landmark or 200, I'll be um, somewhat uh, better at doing this. You know what I mean, I'll be a little bit more proficient. Um, my articulation will, live, will have improved. I would have cut out all the ums and ahs, which I'm kind of aiming to do hopefully sometime soon but you know repetition 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 consistency 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 that's what i'm aiming for but 
before that, you know, just let's just enjoy ourselves. Let's have a good time. You know, chill out. Enjoy, enjoy ourselves. Look, it's actually raining outside, which is awesome. So I'm wearing these glasses and I've got a black T-shirt on and it's raining. And I'm sweating still somehow, right? It's just, you know, that's the perils of being a young black man. You cover yourself in cocoa butter and you end up sweating regardless of what weather is outside. Um, it's actually sweat. It's actually raining. A bit of sleet. A bit of you know, showering out there. But it should be alright. I'll put on one of my rain jackets and sort that out. But I'm gonna keep the shorts, shorts on anyway. I think I'm gonna just go with the shorts vibe and continue doing that. But apart from that, hope you guys are doing well. Um, it's the end of the week for me soon. Um, I've got to prepare a very busy week for your boy, right? Because I'm DJing tomorrow and I'm DJing on Sunday and I'm going carnival on Monday. So I've got a lot to do. A lot to pack in there. Um, so tomorrow, if you're not aware, I'm DJing at Tap East. That's Tap East tomorrow um, for a night called Tap alongside my friend Afro Musa. So it's a little, it's a little outdoor, it's a little outdoor indoor pub bar thing at the bottom of Westfield. They serve amazing craft beer. The staff there are really cool. We have a little sound system there that we play some music on. I'll be playing a whole range of stuff that I'm going to be preparing um, to, tonight when I get home. I'm going to prepare my plates because I haven't sorted it out yet. I didn't have time to do it this week, so I'm going to sort that out tonight. And then on Sunday, Bank Holiday Sunday, I'm going to be playing at the Heathcote and Star for my night called La Betise, alongside my friend again, Afro Muzo. I'm going to bring her along again to play along with me. I'll be playing from about 5 to 11, and I'll bring her on to play from about 11 to 1 to close it out. So we're going to kind of do like a, not back-to-back, but, you know, we're going to split the time that we're playing. I kind of, I, I kind of really, I prefer playing extended sets, actually. I enjoy the idea that I've, I'm in charge of the musical direction for the whole entire night because 5 to 11 is a long time but i think i'm gonna prepare like a really hefty playlist i might even take my controller with me i'm not too sure maybe i'll just um, limit my options to just dump everything on a usb and see how far that could take me but that should be really fun so friday i'm djing at tap east and then on Sunday, I'm DJing at a Heathcote and Star in Leighton Stone. For more deals and all that stuff, click the link below um, on my website, xnozinga.com. You'll be able to find all my DJ gigs, the flyers and shit, and you can direct yourself from there. And then, the most important thing, and then, and then, and then, and then. I love when Spanish people say that, and then. And then, they say to me, but on Monday, I'm going to Carnival, which should be absolute barnstormer i was anticipating to go on sunday but because i got this dj booking um i kind of had to bend the sunday because sunday's a kid's day so i wanted to kind of change up because i've always gone on the monday and i've had varying levels of success going to carnival i have to be honest right um if anyone knows me if anyone is familiar with carnival they'll know that you know we're not we're not we're probably not the best uh marriage that existed right because you know i can be a little bit reckless um i can be able to get a little bit too excited i'm i'm very well of that I'm very, very aware of that. And I'm also aware of, you know, Not Hill Carnival is uh, the playground for people like me to go and lose things um, and to go and get severely intoxicated so much so that you can't walk back home. So um, it should be an interesting situation. This time around, I've got some different tactics of how I'm going to approach things. Number one tactic that I'm going to approach is I'm going to try and get there early, right? Because I never usually get there early. So I always get there quite late. And by late, I mean like three in the afternoon, right? And because it ends at about seven or six or something like that, it's not enough time to get, you know, to have a, have a good time or to even see all the mute sound systems and shit. You end up just kind of, you end up, you end up doing what everyone does in city centers all around the UK. Where you, end up getting, you end up drinking really quickly because you only got a short amount of time to drink. So I'm not going to do that. Then secondly, I'm going to um, stick to the liquors. That's another tip that I've, I've heard a lot of people mention, right? Stick to drinking only liquor and not so much beer because supposedly beer makes you piss more than liquor. Now, I'm not sure if that's particularly true. I'm not sure if that's some like bro science shit, but I'm going to try and give it a go because anytime that I have gone to carnival and I've brought and I bought myself like four cans of Cronenberg, I am standing outside those. Um, I'm standing in a queue for a toilet that's on top of on top of some stairs and it's shaking. So I remember there was, a, there was this set of toilets that are made out of wood, right? That weren't really toilets. They were just basically holes with bins. They were basically holes with a bin at the bottom of them. And people were just pissing into them and they, the things were shaking and you could sometimes hear someone shit on the other side. It was just absolute nastiness. But, you know, you, you kind of get it done. Or the other option is that some people around the area of, Not- of Notting Hill and Labrook Grove, they open their doors and let people come and use their toilets for a set, for a set fee. And it's quite nice because it's just like, you know, someone's, someone's like actual toilet in their house. So they have like, you know, they have stuff, they have weird things like um, washing up, um, hand, wa- hand wash and stuff like that, you know, hand towels. They have sometimes they have mints and chewing gums and shit. Um, they have toilet paper, which is f- 
fuck him out of the out of this world to have to get it during carnival. Because usually those public toilets, when there's when there's toilet paper in the public toilets, they always end up on the floor. Someone someone um, inevitably kind of knocks it over, and the whole roll is kind of strewn all over the floor. I don't know how girls piss in carnival, man. They must just all carry wet wipes or something, because there's no other way. There's no tissue paper ever. It doesn't exist unless you try and go to like a patty shop and to try and ask them for a napkin. But I'm not sure how from friendly they'll be with that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, so that should be fun. And I've actually seen someone give some good tips actually online that I wanted to quickly talk about before I dive into topics about what to do during carnival because, you know, carnival is one of those things that people go to and you can sometimes get lost in the source like I have done many, 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 many a times. So the best thing to do is to follow these tips. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think I've retweeted it somewhere on my Twitter. Let me find, let me try and get it up quickly now before I continue with the podcast. But yeah, um, that should be fun. And I should maybe not, I, there, there could be an argument that I shouldn't go, right? That I should just probably stay in and kind of use the time to kind of do whatever I need to do at home. But it's one of the rare occasions in London where you can kind of go outside and day drink, have like a kind of, you know, this whole street festival sort of vibe, celebrating Caribbean culture. Everyone's usually in a good mood. The weather in the, weather in the UK, not in London, the weather in the UK has been absolutely incredible this summer as well. So it might be good to take advantage of it. But I'm anticipating it's going to be absolutely rammed. I'm anticipating because there's some there's some years that it's been a bit you know it's been a bit hit and miss weather and it's still been rammed and there's been some years where it's been absolutely blazing and the whole world comes out because usually you know non your carnival is one of those kind of things where the diehards always go raining snow whatever they don't care they'll always go right but then there's some people who are on the fence who you know are a bit like eh, I'm not really it's not really kind of my kind of vibe but then when the day comes around and it's hot and shit they'll just end up going regardless so it's just that convergence of like the diehards, the people that are not sure, people that live in the area, all congregate into this one area in West in, in West London. It's going to be an absolute, it's going to be a nightmare, but, you know, it's, it's a fun nightmare, to say the least. So, um, where's this thing? I saw some girl t- retweeted this list of how to kind of, the best practices when you're at Carnival, which I thought was pretty good. As You know, people have made this list on Twitter that are usually quite annoying, but this was actually, an actually a real good list that kind of broke down what you should and shouldn't do. Where is it? Ah, there you go. Here we go. So I'll, I'll put up on the screen now and I'll put it in the show notes so you guys can check it out. Or you can check out yourself. It's a girl on Twitter. Her name is uh, Kazabon. I'm assuming this is one of the people that's behind um, Hipsters Don't Dance because I kind of re- remember her face from back in the day. But she made this uh, thread on Twitter that I thought was very uh, handy advice for people going to carnival. So she reacts on the, on the tweet for those listening. Uh, Notting Hill Carnival is only days away. Here are my top carnival tips. Number one, a costume is not an invitation and a wine is a mutual is mutual, so be respectful. This is, you know, that's that goes without saying. I think the only people that are still trying to wind up girls without asking or without them, or without the girl being willing, are just absolute, you know, dinosaurs who live in the dark ages. You know, the kind of guys that grab girls by the arm, but oi, well, go on, man, come here, man, let me talk to you. You know, those kind of guys, those are probably the guys that are doing that, but for the most part, you know, most normal guys, human beings, will attempt to dance. If you get that weird, stanky face that the girl just smelled a dead rat. You just walk away. Do you know what I mean? You don't persist. You know what I mean? That dead rat face is just like, you know, it's the universal, leave me alone, stay away from me. If you keep carrying on, I'm going to mace you. So that should be fine. Number two, uh, watch the parade and follow the trucks. You will thank me later. This is um, market advice. I'm not sure what the thank me later thing means, but the parade and, and following the music trucks is a good idea anyway because you get to see a lot more of the festival instead of start sitting down at one sound system. Usually it's quite fun. Um, you just seen the girls and all the outfits and stuff when they're dancing is fucking amazing. Um, the bands are playing on the truck with the with the steel band and shit, steel pan bands, whatever. Um, they're really cool as well. And like I said, it's just an excuse to kind of get around the carnival a lot uh, better than you would do just on your own trying to follow the map because those maps are a bit inconsequential because you in, you never end up getting where you need to get to because sometimes the roads are blocked and it's just annoying. So following the trucks is a good way to kind of get there and usually like, oh shit, that's the place I really went to go to. It's around the corner. And you can kind of figure it out that way. Uh, free, explore. There are so many sound systems to visit. This is very much true. Um, I remember there was a couple of years I used to go with a few of my friends back, uh, my kind of like area friends, and we used to always go to Rampage. That's kind of like the hood place to go that's now been unfortunately co-opted by the white man in terms of boiler room. No, I'm joking. I don't mind it, but <coughs> that's funny actually. Um, boiler room and NTS have done quite a few things with Rampage. You know, it was just boiler room. I'm sure it's Boiler Room that's done, that's kind of like worked with uh, with Rampage and done some streaming. But anyway, and Rampage used to be fucking insane. 
I remember, I don't know if it is still a case nowadays, but I remember back in the day, they used to have the MC standing on top of a scaffolding. There'll be like a massive scaffolding, really high. And then that's where the DJ and MCs would be. Like, and it'll just be a like rapping on top of there. It would be absolutely nuts to see. So that was quite cool. Such an English thing, such a London thing to do. Um, so, um, yeah, so Explained Satin is good because I remember we, what's the first time, what's the one I went to that was, what's the house one? There's a, there was a house one that's cancelled now that doesn't, doesn't, they don't do it anymore because I think that area where they were doing it, it got cut off or something. You know when they were shrinking the carnival um, uh, footprint? So there was a, there was a, if it, if, imagine in Sancho Panza. That was one that I kind of discovered after kind of doing the whole exploring thing, what her tips she made, like exploring, maybe discover Sancho Panza and other things. So obviously explore, try and get around as much as you can. Yes, there might be some sound systems that you're looking to go to that you're really like, have hell bent to go to but if you try and go as early as you can you can explore and see different sounds and maybe you might find something that you didn't know you liked then it continues number four find a trini store selling doubles um i don't know about this i've never done this before so i'm assuming that trini means about trinidadian store and store selling doubles doubles of what alcohol or drinks i don't know no idea i'll find out when i get there number five support the market stores buy something even if it's just a whistle i do i do this all the time um, I don't necessarily buy stuff on Amazon and take it with me. I know some people do bring outfits and stuff. I've I, there've been sometimes I have what a couple of times I bought I bought an actual outfit, but usually I don't bring outfits. Usually I just kind of go and kind of go with the flow. Um, but I do try and buy an outfit, even if it's not. For, I mean, a whistle or some flag. I bought loads of. I've got so many random Caribbean flags in my house. Like it doesn't even make any sense, really. I'm not from the Caribbean, obviously. Um, but you know, it's nice just to kind of support the cause and pretend that you're from the Caribbean. You want to have beer can for one evening. <laughs> That's my best Jamaican accent. Sounds horrible, I know. Uh, number five, avoid beer and drink spirits. Oh, this way I kind of saw that tip then. Um, if you don't want to spend most of the carnival toilet queue. This is very interesting. I'm not sure if it's true. It might be bro science. I don't care. I'm going to try it out. Number six, keep your crew small. Otherwise, you'll spend all day waiting for each other. Very, very true. It's not about keeping your crew small as opposed to like the... The best way to move around in life, anyway, if we, I'm sure we've all been to holiday. I'm sure we've all been on holiday with people or in a big group of people and it's been absolute dog shit, right? Um, having to negotiate where to go to eat, um, what shops to visit. It's just an absolute nightmare. I remember once when we went to, no, I remember the first boys holiday I went to, luckily, kind of looking back on it was like really fortunate. I went with a, a huge group of boys, maybe like 14 of us um, over the course of two weeks. We went to New York, right? Um, we kind of all kind of arrived at different times and left at different times, unfortunately, because, you know, we wanted to get cheaper tickets. I think I remember, if I remember correctly, I think I paid like £320 to go to New York on Virgin Airways, like back in the day. That was awesome. <coughs> so the idea of going to a 14 boys to New York was sick, right? Because, you know, that was the era where we were all wearing Supreme, we were all into streetwear. It was kind of like the idea of like living. It was kind of like the idea of like uh, being a real life version of kids and going to the Supreme New York store. I mean, there's... The, the Supreme store in New York on Lafayette, visiting the New, the New York thing store in, in Lower East Side, like um, visiting the Miska store. Like there was loads of little things we wanted to do, right? And just kind of seemed like that was kind of like our mecca to go to New York. But the reality of traveling with 14 people was not lost on us because there was a few people in the group who were, you know, um, not the best company when it came to traveling in groups because they didn't, they, you know, some people that you travel with who are, who don't want to acquiesce with the group. They just want to do their own thing, which is fine, isn't it? Because you paid for your holiday, no one's going to force you, but there is a kind of, there is a kind of, um, there is, a, there is a, a kind of collective understanding that sometimes you have to compromise. Sometimes you might not, we might not go to the vegan thing that you want to go to. Sometimes you might not go to the club that you want to. It's good just to kind of like, you know, just acquiesce and just hang out with a group. Uh, but we had a couple members of the group who just didn't want to do that. And then, you know, and it doesn't, it only, it only takes a couple of people, it only takes a couple of dissenters to kind of ruin the whole flow of the whole group. And I think I've heard Jordan Peterson say it before, right? The idea that if you, I think some people have the mis, the mis, um, the misguided idea that if you put good kids in a group of bad kids, that the bad kids are going to come good. What actually happens is that the bad kids corrupt the good kids, and that's what usually happens in a group, a group of friends. If you have one person that's like whining, like, oh, where are we? Where are we going? How far is it? Uh, even if everyone else is cool, it will, it will inevitably. Uh, leak all that kind of negativity and that kind of doubt and that kind of bummerish and that kind of like uh, being an being an absolute um, 
ball and chain that will inevitably sleep into everyone else that's in the group and what will end up happening you end up having a whole group full of whingers you end up having people split up into different little groups and then you just end up being a shit holiday so carnival in general anyway because and as well carnival is different carnival is even worse because carnival is a huge concentration of people huge all concentrated onto the narrow streets of London. If you're familiar with London, you know our streets are narrow, right? They were built in the Victorian ages and they have not been rebuilt ever since then. So for the most part, they are tiny. They can only, sometimes some of the roads, in, in, especially in West End, could only fit one car, right? At a stretch, two cars, because there's cars parked on either side of the road. So they're really, really narrow. So everyone's kind of jam-packed in it. The last thing you want to do is have all your friends with you kind of traveling in lines and usually everyone has this weird thing when they're traveling groups of friends i guess it's kind of how you talk right where you kind of you walk in a line have you ever done that when you're in, 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 on a pavement and see a group of friends coming and they're walking in a line but no one wants to break it like move man it's so annoying like you're not gonna lose your you know i mean and they're not even holding hands they just want to stay with their group and they all kind of move together like a like a flock of birds like, mm -mm 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 -mm. they don't they don't let you break through but I, you know what i mean I, I'm, I'm a gangster man i run through that wall you know what i mean I run through that wall. You're not gonna stop me. I jump over the walls. I run through walls, gangster. But anyway, um, the worst thing you could do is travel in a big group of friends. I've seen some girls do it at carnival. We kind of do that whole holding hand things, and they all trying to walk through. Um, I, I remember once I've seen a group of thirteen girls. We kind of counted it laughingly. Like, but they were kind of, you know, they were kind of like really attractive, like young girls, like all mixed race and shit, kind of hot. So I think it was kind of like a weird kind of flex. You know what I mean, like they were all coming down the line, like. You know what I mean? Winner, 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 winner. Fair enough, they were 18. I know it's creepy. Hey, over there. Hey, they're legal. Don't judge me. But, you know, I think it was kind of like a way to kind of show off, like, hey, we're all bad bitches and shit. Oh, my God, look at us. But um, girls can do that. But you're not necessarily going to hold the hand of your guys, are you? Like, walking, hey, come on, man, hurry up, man. I mean, locking fingers and kind of like, oh, shit. <laughs> rubbing their hand. You're not going to do that. So, um... Yeah, try and, try and travel in a group of five or less than three. Imagine seeing a whole group of, like, guys, like, guy guys, like, walking down, like, trying to go through, kind of, like, excuse me, excuse me, and they're all holding hands, trying to not let go of each other. That's that's weird, man. But anyway, um, or you can just, or you can just carry a bit of rope, right? You can carry a bit of rope with you to hold your friends so you don't lose them. And then once you're dancing, you kind of, that rope can kind of double, double up as a lasso. So if you want to wind up a girl, you can kind of throw it over her and kind of drag her in. Do you know what I mean that that isn't creepy. That's not weird. Oh man, that thing always keeps dropping all over the place. But anyway, who cares? I'll pick up later. But yeah, that's not weird. That's not creepy. No, all that's not creepy. That's completely fine. I think all girls love that sort of stuff. Anyway, it continues. Ah, let me get this back up on the screen. What's this say here? So it continues. Um, keep your crew small. Number six, keep your crew small. Otherwise, you'll um, spend all day waiting for each other. Number seven. Plan your journey in and out of the carnival before you go. You may not have a signal when you get there. This is a very good tip, actually. So big up Kazaboon or Kazabon. Kazabon or Kazaboon? Kazabon. It's not Kazaboon because it's the N. Kazabon. Big up Kazabon. Um, tip number seven is a really, really good tip about planning your journey in and out before you get there because the signal is non-existent. I'm assuming because of the large concentration of people, all those signals are going to go at the same time. It just kind of defaults and it all kind of gets locked out. Now, I'm sure that's a reason why. That reason could be a police reason. Right, so in case something happens, the police kind of want to have a priority over the airwaves so they can kind of respond to danger um, one way or the other. I don't know. But there is this idea that, or there is um, an accepted reality that if you go to carnival and you don't meet your friends before, you will not find them because there's no signal. You can sometimes get signal in places where there's, basically if you look around, there's no one around you, you can get signal. If you can't see um, five meters in front of you because of people's faces, there'll be no signal. So that's the kind of um, general um, consensus. Usually what I try and do if I want to get signal is I might pop into a pub and usually because the pubs are a bit quiet because everyone's outside because it's fucking blazing hot, you can sometimes get signal in there or you can sometimes call someone through the Wi-Fi of a pub. Um, of course, if you go to a pub, uh, buy a beer, buy a drink, don't be a dickhead and try and claim the free Wi-Fi. Anyway, I'm sure they won't let you claim free Wi-Fi anyway. I'm sure they'll have a passcode for it because people try and do that anyway. So that's an actual really, really good tip. Um, the exit thing, not that much or so. I don't really think so because when it, when it dies, it dies anyway. Um, I think the other good tip maybe for exiting, which I might do this time around, which I know a lot of people do with stations. Um, I've done that a few times if I've ended, if I finish work early or if I want to go to some station. I'll sometimes just stay at work for another half an hour because if you leave, when everyone else is leaving, the station is absolutely jammed because the whole, uh, the whole of that area who are also working because usually, you know, in those, especially in East London, the kind of old street shortage area, there's loads of offices around there. So all those main stations like Shoreditch uh, Overground, Liverpool Street Station, Old Street at 6 or between 6 and 6.30, they're absolutely ran because everyone's leaving work at the same time. So I try and, you know, try and just wait. 
wait it out and let the kind of the, the crowd die down. So I might do the same thing at Gnotty or Carnival. I might just wait back and um, see and kind of like let the crowds die down and then kind of go to station. So that might be a good tip. And then um, number eight uh, tip. Here are some of the favorite sounds that this girl's talking about that she likes. Uh, Naja Corner on Monday for Afrobeats. I didn't know that they are dead in Naja Corner. That's awesome. Nasty Love for Bashment. GT Flex, Real Show for everything from hip-hop to dancehall to garage. Gladdy Wax for reggae. Volcano for hip-hop and funky. And Toddler T, SSP, big mix of genres and performers. Number nine. A minute silence will be held at 3 p.m. on Sunday and Monday to honor the victims of the Greenfield Tap Fire. Take part and be respectful. That's awesome. And number 10. The official organizer of Carnival. Da, 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 uh, have loads of info on their website and app so go and follow them also more tips here really really fucking good tips she absolutely smashed it so i recommend you guys check it out um her, Insta, her twitter name is kazabon i've got it here on the screen i'll link it below in the show notes so you guys can see as well kazabon on twitter some good tips there for all you carnival attendees and as well, oh, apart from that, um, so let's jump right into the topics and stuff I want to talk about. And also, just before I jump into the topics, in case you guys are wondering, I have designed some t-shirts on a site called Everpress, which is a great little site where you can make t-shirts and you can get them backed on, by your supporters on platforms such as like this, such pl pl platforms such as this, right? So I made these t-shirts for everyone out there who's into DJing or likes DJing culture because, you know, I always thought, you know, it's interesting. You know, DJing is one of those kind of professions because it's got such a low barrier of entry. Everyone never to, everyone, everyone never to be ends up doing it. But I just like the, I just, and about, I always find it weird, right? The kind of, um, how do you, how to describe it? I always find it weird. I, I always find it strange or difficult pr promoting myself, right? Saying that I'm a DJ. It just sounded really pretentious and corny and even just typing out the thing dj all right or djing this weekend it always seemed a bit strange or funny to me same way how back in the day when i used to promote uh for clubs and stuff i used to put on something that we used to call nights right uh short for club nights and you go oh you, you know you say to some people you know are oh, you coming to my night you coming to my night and you know, there was one friend of there was, there was a particular friend of mine who loved saying that you know what i mean are you coming to my night you coming to my night and I always find it a little bit pretentious, a little bit, you know, a little bit try hardy. But over the years, I've I've grown to, I've kind of grown into it and accepted that, you know, it is try hardy, it is pretentious, it is a bit cliche, but I love it, right? Something I've been doing for a long time. I've been doing it for nearly eight years now. Um, something that I love, something that I'm going to continue doing regardless of what profession I'm into. I like just doing it on the side as a hobby. It's fucking amazing. One of the best hobbies that you could ever have, right? It beats doing golf. It beats fucking playing golf and that bullshit. So I thought, you know, what would be a good tea to kind of represent my love for DJing and to kind of poke fun at myself, really? It's kind of like a, it's a bit of a walking meme in that respect, right? So I, I designed this little t-shirt um, that I had an idea for doing a long time ago. I wanted to, have, I wanted to have it say different things, but I thought DJing would be quite a good thing. So I'll kind of put up here on the screen. So it's a t-shirt I put, I designed it on Everpress. It's available now. You can find the link on the show notes. I'm going to put it there. You can support it. Um, but it kind of looks like this. Hopefully you guys can see it on the screen. It's got so it's got DJing written on the front here, and then on the back, it's got a pair of uh, CDJs, uh, Pioneer One Thousands, and a and a kind of a standard setup you see in the club, and a DJ NM DJM Nine Hundred mixer that it kind of everyone's kind of familiar with. So it's kind of like a bit of regular kit that everyone knows that they've used, and the whole DJing thing at the front. So I thought it was kind of a funny T-shirt, something that I'd wear. Uh, again and again and again. I'm not sure if ever press do one offs because that'd be good. I'd like to have, just have a one off of this so I could just use it myself. But the shirt itself is fucking amazing and I can't wear and I can't wait to wear it someday very, very soon. Um, so if you want to support and you want to have a t shirt for yourself or if you know anyone that's a DJ or you want to support DJ culture, please check out the t shirt and get it and support it. The link will be attached below. Um, so I think I'm, I'm going to make a few bits of merch actually, some random merch I'm going to put on my store. I did, I did make a Shopify account ages ago where I was selling some of my zines that I might have lying around somewhere here. Do I have them? Uh, no, I don't. Anyway, but I'll find them another time. But I was making a few zines back in the day that I used to put, of, put, uh, put up for sale. But I think I'm going to make a few more of those actually and put them up there so you guys can check out. But anyway, roll into the topic because time is a-wasting. Time is a-wasting. What have I got here on the topic list? So... Straight off the bat, talk about these off-white blazers that have come out, right? Um, new colorways of the off-white. So I guess, as you're all familiar with um, Virgil and his off-white brand, they had, you know, he probably had a big year last year with the Nike 10 collaboration. 10 shoes that were 
that were without you know without being hyperbolic that were really really amazing um he kind of knocked it out of the park i think i remember him mentioning in the interview virgil mentioned interview that um he was kind of nervous about taking on the job because he knew that if he fucked it up he'd kind of be cancelled in streetwear right people would kind of write him off it would be the opportunity it would be the opportunity for some people that kind of hate him to finally go see he's not as good as you think he is but fortunately because he's been so prolific in in his kind of idea generation and execution I think I've always said this. Um, I think the fact that he's been so prolific and he's been so consistent, or he's been so like you know, he gets stuff out so quickly. There is going to be a discrepancy in quality sometimes. It's gonna some things are not going to look as polished as they should do. But I think the beauty of what he does is because he does things so quickly. If you give him the tools uh, to get his ideas out in a very polished way, he's going to shine. He's going to make his ideas look even better. So when he's given uh, kind of the keys to the Nike archive and he's kind of, gi- he's kind of given um, some really talented Nike designers to work alongside with, it's no surprise that the shoes came out great. And he, sh- he made some pictures, right? he shows the pictures of those kind of behind the scene process of how he put together the Jordan specifically, how he kind of got put them into WhatsApp and did some sketches and kind of like marked up what he wanted in them and changed them around that way and then kind of sent it back. Sort of similar, what's, sort of similar to what um, Carl Alford does at, does at Chanel. You got some videos of Carl Alford at Chanel. You just sketch something on a bit of paper and hand it to someone from the atelier and they would kind of make a mock-up. They'd kind of get what he went for the sketch and make a, an amazing mock-up, which you can't really do yourself in, a, in your own kind of in-house cut and sew brand because sometimes, you know, you might not have the experience, people working in the company, you might not have the resources, you know, it's, it's just different, right? So he was able to knock out the park. But now it seems as if Nike have seen that recipe of seeing that, you know, he's actually, the models are super successful. And I don't know if it was a plan of all along, but it probably was because Nike always do this. You know, they always have, usually they have a tier zero product that they kind of get out there. And then usually they kind of like bring in some of the elements that tier zero into kind of like limited edition and sometimes uh, GR releases. But um, Virgil has been lucky enough to kind of continue having his name or his brand associated with the, with the collaboration. So, we're seeing different colors of the Prestos come out, the all blacks that came out, the all whites come out. We're seeing more colors of Air Max 90 I saw that might be coming out in all black. And now we're seeing more iterations of the of the 97 and the Blazers. We saw it with uh, the Venus Williams collaboration, the Queen. And then we're seeing him now with these um, sort of Halloween iterations that are coming out soon. Which I thought looked pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm a real big fan of them, especially the black pair. Um, they I don't know what they kind of remind me of. I was trying to think of what they reminded me sort of, but I like the, the shoes. Now, the only thing I don't like about the shoes and the only thing I don't like about sneaker culture in general are the fucking pictures, right? I don't think I've ever seen, right, a sneaker picture. I think the only one I saw was from North, North, a uh, shop called Norte. I think it's based in Chicago. They did a really amazing set of, like, promotional images for the Prestos where they kind of put the Prestos, they kind of pressed them into um, a photocopier and then scanned it in. It looks really cool. But so, like, usually, sneakerhead pictures are so shit. Like, what, what? Like, what the fuck is this? Like, what is this? Can someone tell me what this is? Like, they look horrible here. This guy is sitting on a stool with his feet on a chain. Um, his uh, jogging pants um, deceptively pulled up so he can show his bit of his tattoo there. Like, fuck off. They look so corny. The shoes themselves look amazing, but the pictures of trainers, like, on sneakerheads, it looks so bad. Like, they're not even laced up properly well here. Like, huh? Like... Look Look how um, strategically placed the fucking shoelaces thing is popped up so you can see the whole thing, including the speech marks. It's like, come on, man. Like, who stands like that? Really? Like, sneakerhead pictures are the worst. Or maybe hype pictures anyway are the worst. I don't know what... Like, oh, he's wearing off-white. No wonder. Oh, look at the tie in there. He was wearing off-white joggers. And he's... Look, look. And look how high up that right foot is compared to his left foot. Just to show the fucking tattoo. Like, fuck off. Really? Ugh, this just disgusting. Not nice whatsoever. And the only one, the, the only one that I actually did like that I thought was nice, was um this these pictures actually. I thought these pictures were, looks actually quite cool, where they show off the other um the other color, the orange color as well as the black color. Um, what they call they call the spooky pack. So uh, um, I don't want to read the copy. I don't. Do does anyone read the copy on trainer releases usually, especially when it comes from hypebeast or other show, other websites? They just regurgitate some stuff where they make up words or uh, it doesn't matter anyway do you like the shoes or not basically that's what it is um so yeah i like them i think the blacks look really really nice i really like the shoes um the other color kind of remind me a little bit of the cassette players but i think they look really really nice i i actually like a pair again blazers aren't really a, probably a shoe for me actually i need to get them up on the screen here so you guys can see blazers really are, aren't the shoe for me i think because um the sole is quite thin and usually the toe is quite narrow and i have quite wide feet 
um, and I'm quite flat footed in that respect. So sometimes they can they can hurt wearing them, but I really do like the look of them. I think they look amazing. I'll definitely get a pair of the blacks um, to wear with a pair of shorts or something. I think they look so so sick. So yeah, these are coming out. I think when they're saying, I think they're saying on the nineteenth, is it? So I think yeah, they're set to release on the fifteenth and the twenty second. So watch this space. I'm assuming. So they should be coming out very very soon. Like the look of those. Um, what else was on the docket? I saw that it really looked really good. So this, it's going to be a good year for trainers, actually, overall, isn't it? Oh, and then we got the acronym and Nike Prestos. I'm pretty sure some of you guys, guys have seen this as well. Let me get these up on the screen, which I thought looked cool because I, I missed out on the first batch, unfortunately, that released. But it seems like they're going to release another batch as well, which is a uh, good omen. It's funny because I think um, recently Arison Hugh from... Um, acronym ended his relationship with ACG didn't he so I, I didn't know they were I didn't know they were going to continue their relationship with Nike so maybe they're different divisions and stuff or maybe it was a, it was a kind of amicable split but it's nice to see that they're putting out another pair of shoes <clears throat> so we got the acronym and Nike at Presto Mids that were a big success when they fir the first batch came out the kind of olive and a sort of like neon green colorways so these should be awesome when they come out soon um I really like the look I really like the look of these they look really 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 nice I'm not sure what color I'd go for probably the pink they're really nice color or the yellow they look really nice they work really well with a pair of you know acronym joggers it's funny because most of their clothes are quite tonal right they use a lot of blacks a lot of olives a lot of different variations of gray but the shoes are nice bright colors especially um the other what were the shoes they, they made um with the that didn't have any laces on them was it the vapor maxes um i wasn't really a fan of those specifically but i do like the press them is i think they look really really cool so they are they are coming out very soon too. They're coming out on the eighth. So it's a jam pack. So we've got the, these on the eighth. Um, the Elf Whites on the fifteenth and the twenty second. A lot of big shoes coming out. And then we've also got these reacts from Undercover, right? Nike reacts. They still haven't come out yet. I'm not sure. They keep showing us these pictures of these shoes, but we don't get to buy them because um, they've had a, we've had a restock of the. They already had a restock of the of uh, no. They 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 re released no. They had another drop of the reacts, right? Um, that were kind of like a darker colorway. So we had the sale in black that came out recently, that came out uh, previously, and then they had a restock of those, and then they had another color come out, and then we still have a whole batch of, of undercovers that haven't come out yet that debuted on the runway, uh, on the Paris Fashion um, Men's Paris Fashion Week runway, and these are really really nice colors. I think are gonna look amazing. These will look really cool, and these GRs I saw on Little Jupiter's um, Instagram. If you haven't, if you're not following him, I recommend you check this guy out. Uh, it's called Little Jupiter. He posts little, he posts loads of um, pictures of sh up and coming shoes that are coming out. So this dude here, Little L I L I L G J U P I T E double -R, R, Little Jupiter on Instagram, posts loads of cool pictures of, of shoes and stuff. Um, and he posted these that are, I'm assuming going to be just general release. They're not going. They're not going to be. They're not collaboration. If I don't see any collaboration written on them, so these look amazing. Great colorway. Hopefully these come out very very soon. So they should be nice as well. So I think that might be it on the trainer front. That I'm looking forward to copying or getting very 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 soon. Um, what else is on the docket here that I wanted to speak about with you lovely people? Glasgow licensing laws. Oh yeah, back to clubbing news. So as as usual, you know, I'll keep talking about clubs and nightlife culture and um, um, curfews and licensing laws because I think it's very, very, very important. You know, for the mo I know some people aren't the biggest fans of nightlife culture and think that you know it spreads a, a bad message to the youth them, but I think there are a, there are there is a contingent of people out there that don't mind going out late at night and getting fucked up with some absolute strangers. So I think we should be allowed the safe spaces or the places to do such things. And Glasgow have city council have kind of like shown um, the rest of Great Britain, the United Kingdom, or England in general how you should go about doing it, do, doing this thing, right? And this article I saw on on, on kind of resident advisor pointed out as much, and I'll kind of read it and get it up on the screen now so you guys can check it out. So it says the following: uh, Glasgow City Council issues draft policy that gives clubs a four a.m. license. And so, as you know, you know, having you know, come from the news that Alibi is closing and they're no longer going to be around, this is kind of welcome news. This is what everyone kind of wants to hear, you know. Um, common sense licensing laws that um, put into consideration the thoughts and feelings of residents and also the thoughts and feelings of club owners and club goers. So, the article reads the following The Licensing Board of Glasgow City Council has issued a draft policy document as part of a public consultation on the city's nightlife. 
Uh, among the policy drafts, recommendation is a pilot scheme for 4 a.m. closing times for nightclubs. The draft says that the scheme will be implemented in city centre venues, able to demonstrate a positive contribution to late night economy and investment in safety and security measures, aligned with the best practices. This is what everyone wants to hear, right? I don't think any club owner is um, naive enough to expect that, you know, no, just give me licensing laws and you guys deal with all the trouble and all that malarkey, right? I think it's um, it's common sense for it to be like an equal relationship. And it's kind of like the same idea as like if you put in a street festival or like a, uh, a block party, the idea is that your community or the people that are organizing it should be the ones that are kind of picking up the trash, right? You shouldn't be leaving it to the um, general street cleaners who have nothing to do with your thing, who are kind of just getting an extra workload, not getting an extra bit of money, not getting any, any extra money because you decide to put on a road party, right? It's up to your community to kind of like police itself and to kind of like take care of itself, right? Similar to what I said the other day about the whole Jack Master thing that happened at Love Saves the Day. You know, we have to step in as a community or as club goers and kind of like make sure that action doesn't happen on our watch so when the council <clears throat> gives clubs a mandate of like look <clears throat> we're going to give you a license but you have to it's, it's extra responsibility on you guys to make sure that no one fucks up right and if they do fuck up the license is gone and it's your fault so i like that kind of a common sense approach right um so this would uh this would the draft goes by to, goes on to say be subject to review after a 12 month period which is awesome right so they give you the 4 a.m license and after 12 months like anyone else has at, at work you have the performance reviews you know, just to see how you're getting on you get set kpis uh key performance indicators that kind of keep you on a good track sometimes it can be annoying you have to constantly meet someone and you know uh kind of like a lie about your ambitions and shit but sometimes it can be good too um, the draft also includes acknowledgement um, of the agents, agents of change principle, which places responsibility on prospective property developers for mitigating noise complaints for music venues. That was a phrase I didn't know what it meant, right? Agents of change. Um, and the commitment to reducing single-use practice pl plastics such as straw, which is amazing. The document also describes music uh, played by DJs as an important part of the city's culture, providing one of the most popular mediums for listening to and experiencing music across the city. The draft goes on to define DJ music and suggests that the venues must provide monster speakers and an adequate sound system, which has been subject to acoustic room control, which is amazing too, isn't it? They're giving, they're stipulating the, they're, they're basically saying that if you tr please get. Uh, good quality sound systems in not shitty ones that you have to blare up to red in order to kind of get the sound high a good quality sound system doesn't need to be super high it just needs to be loud enough that everyone can hear and not need to shout at each other when they're talking um the use of toughened glass to prevent injury and disfigurement has also been recommended these points are also uh, all absent from the current policy document that published in 2013 element the chairman of nighttime industry association the ntia told residents advisor resident advisor it is it is indeed very good news from the city from glasgow city council under the leadership of um councillor susan atkin who has taken it upon herself to understand the key issues pension benefits of nightlife and how it contributes to the city's tapestry of business culture tourism and the quality of life of all residents throughout the night one uh the one-time advisory nighttime commission da, 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 da. we continue to champion the benefit of 24 hour licensing and need for it to order to have benefits to cure alongside this having agency of change as part of the draft proposal is fantastic news which is awesome right and it continues in 30 plus years in business i think this is the biggest opportunity i have witnessed and make significant changes to outdated lasting policy and drag our, our city into 21st century um it's important to note that what is being suggested the four-year license is a pilot scheme it's also important to note that the previous measurements touted in draft policy statements have failed to get past the consultation stage so the request for further submissions on draft policy need to be picked up or praise and promoters again an amazing 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 um uh turn from uh this Glasgow city council and just common sense again because you know this tourism increasing the people that come into your city you know that also increases you know people that are going to come in and open clubs up they're going to come and open up restaurants and it's going to increase uh the revenue and the money is generated by your by your city in general everyone benefits from it everyone benefits everyone benefits they're going to keep and people are going to be able to open up apartment blocks obviously soundproof to not take over spaces of clubs and whatever everyone wins by it. this is where this is this is my this is what i think a positive gen gentrification looks like right a kind of uh, a symbiosis a kind of like an agreement between uh, both promoters and the city council that areas of glasgow or some city centers need uh, a refurbishment need a new lease of life right so then you know what you do is that you encourage uh, developers to come in and build apartments you know that are all, that are not taking up space where clubs could be and you also encourage clubs to open up spaces that are not in are not going to invade um everyone else's personal space right they're not going to take up room they're not going to seep into people's everyday lives that's what you want a 
kind of agreement on both ends that we can help each other in this regard now hopefully um these are lessons that london learns mm -hmm. and we kind of take on board as well and we kind of you know implement citywide or in other places of, the, of london especially in south and stuff but i think that might be a new um frontier especially for the 24 hour clubs that might be a good place to get them to or somewhere like southeast london or whatever so yeah that was very very good news so congratulations to everyone in glasgow that would be a good place and I, again that that gets me interested now i want to go to glasgow because i'm a i'm a cl i'm a club tourist right i went to frankfurt specifically to go to Fra uh, robert johnson you know one of the best clubs in the world and it was an absolute amazing experience and i went to i basically went and i country and i gave you know i gave i gave the city some money you know i ate places i had some breakfast places i went to a bar had some dinner in some places i stayed in a hostel like these are things i did the country i know i gave back into the economy because I went to go Robert Johnson, so everyone kind of works. It's sort of like a trickle down effect. Anyway, um, let's continue on. Da 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 da. We talked about Jack Master the other day, so you can get rid of that one. Oh, shows I'm watching actually. Because for anyone out there that might might want some new TV shows to check out, because you know nowadays or right now it's a bit dead with the whole TV shows. Game of Thrones is taking a bit of a hiatus. Ozark isn't back on yet. But for those wondering why I'm watching, at the moment, I'm watching two shows. Um, again, I don't have time to watch a, any, a lot of things because I'm doing so much at the moment. Um, you know, it's it's, it's, it's funny, that, isn't it? Because I always used to scoff at people that used to say that kind of things. Like, oh, I don't watch TV. I don't have time. It's like, oh, fuck off, you wanker, right? But now I get it because I actually don't have time. Between reading, between DJing, between pl putting together a playlist, between writing on my blog, uh, between writing in general, um, I just don't have the time. Working out, there is no absolute, there really is no time. So what I do watch when I do have time is for our foreign shows or like standard British TV shows that probably a lot of people won't like. Number one show that I watched that I really, really recommend you check out is a show called The Unforgotten that um, is on, I think, Channel 4, but I watch it on Netflix. It's an amazing um kind of like drama based a uh, cop drama um it's the amazing drama that kind of the general theme of it is that usually the detective a lady will stumble on a case like a recent case and then somehow through the investigation of the recent case she'll find out there's pieces of the story that date back to a time way way, way before she was around i don't know 70s or 80s whatever and then from there they uncover like a story a missing body a missing person a rape that didn't go that went unreported and through that through that one through that one crime there'll be various different storylines that'll kind of unfold and together they'll kind of all converge at the end in this big kind of explosion of a revelation. It's a little bit cliche, it's a little bit cheesy, but I absolutely love it. It's gripping television, it's right up my alley. It's a kind of um, standard cop detective drama that I love from British TV, so I recommend you check that out. It's called The Unforgotten. It's available on Netflix and it's a really good TV show. The other show I watch is a German-based show. Uh, Pacific is based in Berlin, no coincidence there because I love the city. Uh, it's based in Neuklin, um, uh, which is a predominantly like a Turkish neighborhood. And it's called Four Blocks. Four Blocks. It's available on Amazon Prime Video. So if you've got an Amazon Prime account, you you have automatically have the video uh, portion of it. You just have to, it's a bit hard to navigate on the website, actually. You have to go on the website and click the bit where you search on the search bar. You click on that bit and you know what the categories are. There'll be video. You click that and it'll take you into the video bit. It's called Four Blocks. And it's basically about um, a, uh, a crime family who got kind of over the period of like eight episodes of uh, their life kind of like crumbles because of an undercover cop that kind of comes into life who's kind of an old school friend of one of the uh, gang members and it kind of like tells different stories of each four member of the gang one person trying to go straight one person whose marriage is struggling one person with an absolute nutcase and for each story you get different sort of storyline different aspect a different version of what it means to be an immigrant uh, living in berlin it also talks about the immigrant story in berlin you know how hard it is to uh, claim asylum how hard it is to get a passport there being a turkish native loads of real good um stories kind of overlapping the kind of neo-nazis that live there um that whole tension that's living in between them it's a really good series i recommend you check it out of course it's um it's all in german with subtitles but i recommend you check it out and i don't watch stuff dubbed because it's fucking awful but watch check it out so four blocks on amazon prime and unforgotten are two shows that i highly recommend that you check out um next on the docket youngberg comment right this is something i've been thinking about a lot lately i guess um <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have the same sort of thinking. So, Youngberg, also known as Hitmaker, um, the Grammy Award winning producer. Um, you know, he had a bit of a, let's say, a controversial past back in the day when he was known as Youngberg, but now, ever since he's rebranded or since he's kind of like arose as this, like, you know, committed uh, practitioner of a craft, that's what happens. You know, see what happens when you just cut all the bullshit and just concentrate on your work. 
you end up being Young Berg, who's now transformed into Hitmaker. Who's just you know, just a cool guy. People don't really remember um, his um, his um, antics back in the day anymore because he just stays in the studio, right? He just kind of you know stays out of all trouble, doesn't get involved in all the nonsense on social media, and just you know concentrates on his craft. That's what you got to do. Like Travis Scott, you know, Nicki Minaj is out here shouting and having a public meltdown and screaming she has a number one album, and he's just slowly but surely concentrating on his craft. He's putting out great merch. He's got a tour that's gonna come out soon with no seats, which sounds fucking amazing. That's what pure artistry is about. But anyway, Youngberg made a very interesting comment um, a few weeks ago about uh, something I've been thinking about a lot, right? Um, and I think uh, they spoke about it sl- slightly on uh, Joe Biden podcast, but I didn't really expand it because I'm sure they're probably friends with the guy in question. But Youngberg said the following, and I'll put it up on the screen. You guys can see it, um, and I'll read it to you guys on audio. So he said the following. Um, hit, hit maker, also in the Youngberg, tweets the following. How does Rob Marksman get to debate t- and tell the culture what's hot or not then put out his own music and it's shit at joe button this is a really good um topic because um if you're not familiar with rob markman rob markman is the guy from uh, genius the dude that's like breaking down um um lyrics and shit the guy that interviews some artists on genius and he's got a show where they review music um he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a dweeb he dresses a bit shit um but in general he seems like a cool guy but he's also got his own rap career that he puts out his own music. But for the most part, his music isn't very good, right? It's a bit, it's a bit shit um, from all intents and purposes. But you know, the craft, of, the craft of making music is it might be for a pretty frame. It's, it's like a, you know, it's like a selfish endeavor. He's got like a nine to five. He's got like a day job. He's not necessarily trying to. Make, it doesn't look like he's trying to make it as like a chart selling artist. I don't know if he is or not. But it just seems like he just likes to rap and likes to put out music, regardless if it's good or not. But it is something I've been thinking about a lot lately because it is um. You know, hip-hop is quite, you know, it's a very opinionated form of music. Everyone has got big opinions. Everyone kind of has their favorites who they ride or die for. People want to say things are trash and all that sort of malarkey. And it's very, it's, it's a very funny, that it's a very funny tension, right? Being a Rob Marksman, right? He's very, he's... He's very analytical. He has a, he has a lot of a, opinions on music and what constitutes hits, and he likes breaking down songs and lyrics and stuff. But it's very difficult to have a level of respect for somebody. I guess it, it happens a lot in football, doesn't it? You see sometimes in football interviews when an ex footballer is talking to another footballer about uh, something like um, transfers or whatever, or just the current state of the of the football um, landscape, or whatever maybe, or ex manager or whatever. You see a different kind of connection and appeal. You see a lot when Terry Henry used to work for Sky Sports when he was talking to Lukaku or other players, like you see that kind of love and appreciation, the kind of like, you know, the camaraderie, because they've all, they've both been there. They, they know what the, they, they know what it's about. They've, un- they understand the struggle, right? Um, they get it. They both get it. And there's a different level of love that comes out of relationship, different kind of insight. You even sometimes get it with Gary Neville, because they can see this guy is an absolute winner. He's done things. Like, even though he's, you know, he's, of, he's, he's kind of like, quote unquote, talent wasn't high as other people, but Gary Neville is like the epitome of like, what it means to be a, prof- a top professional at his, um, in, in his, in his, um, uh, skill of domain, right? Or his domain of skill, because he's been able to achieve the highest level of, of success with a limited amount of talent, just through pure hard work and grit. And loads of people can appreciate that. But then there's the other side of it where it's like when they get interviewed by journalists, over you can kind of see a little bit of the kind of rolling of the eyes. Like, oh, here he goes again. This guy's never played a game in his life, or a pundit that's kind of criticizing a manager. And he's like, dude, you don't know what the pressure's like to be here on this on this hot seat. But you never get you never get this. You never get someone who's been really shit. Or maybe since the game, was a good example. You know, he kind of always gets a stick about his time at Valencia. You know. Um, when he's kind of criticizing the managers because you, you know he had an absolute torrid time and he was kind of booed out of the club after six months but it's interesting in hip-hop where you get you know kind of av- people who didn't necessarily it's kind of the, what happened with Kanye when you interviewed about Sway when Sway was telling him to just do it himself and Kanye was like you don't know what you don't, you don't know nothing like you've never made a, a, an actual fashion business and and you know Sway's like no I have made my own t-shirts like, but it's not the same you know, it's not, we're not talking about the same thing here you've made t-shirts I'm trying to make a clothing um so I wonder, can you really debate and criticize music when your music is not good at yourself, right? So it's either like I think as a critic, you have to kind of like decide where you what you where you want to be. You have to decide if you want to be a crit a crit a critic or if you want to be a, a practicing artist. But I don't think you can be both. You have to kind of hang up one, because once you have that other hat on, unfortunately, the public and artists themselves are always going to look at you weird or out of one eye because it's like you know, but your stuff is shit. How can you criticize me, right? But if you're just a critic. And you've formed a, a very, you've kind of given, you've kind of, you're a critic with actual, because um, I'm not a fan of critics in general, because usually criticism is usually a, a way to kind of people just to kind of hate regardless, right? They don't, they, don't, they don't really form or articulate their own point of view 
or they don't really have um they don't really have a preferred style that you guys can you know sometimes some critics you have no idea what they're gonna say about an album that's not a good thing you should kind of have an idea of what they kind of into and you could kind of like anticipate oh yeah he's gonna hate this album or he or she's gonna hate that album because you know they don't like that kind of sound or whatever or they're consistent with it, it doesn't matter if it's someone they like they will just not like that sound because they don't like that sound but if you but you can't do that when you're an artist because it's like you know, you kind of have to be open to everything because you're making art. You kind of have to be allow the muse to take you where it's going to take you. So it's hard for them for you to kind of sit back and criticize people for not making stuff that you like because uh, it's just a messy thing. And I just think in general anyway, like, you know, it's weird as well for Rob Markson because he must know that his peers don't necessarily rate his music. So it must be strange to kind of be sitting across somebody that's a peer in your same industry, doesn't necessarily think you're good at what you do, but you're criticizing what they do. It's like... Uh, Again, it's a very interesting topic. I don't know. It's not spoken about a lot. I think Joe Biden's probably a good example of it. He's kind of con completely ditched trying to be an artist and concentrating uh, specifically on trying to be, you know, a, a kind of cultural commentator. And obviously, with the success um, they've, they've kind of garnered now recently, actually, congratulations to everyone on the Joe Biden podcast. Well, actually, more claps like that. Um, they've signed a, a big deal with Spotify. And I think everyone's kind of getting paid off the back of that. So that's cool to see them doing that. They deserve it. They're probably the best hip hop culture based podcast out there and bar none. So I'm very, very happy for those guys over there. Well done. Congratulations to everyone involved. But you can see Joe Biden's kind of like pivoted away from doing any kind of music at all. I think he may, I don't know if it's conscious, not if he was aware of it consciously that he couldn't do both, but he can't do both. He has to be an ex-rapper. You can't be an active rapper and still critique the culture especially when your art isn't necessarily um, received as well as everyone else's. It's not necessarily in the zyga. Who don't necessarily rate it, right? So you can't, it doesn't, anyway, it's an interesting point of view. I would wonder, I hope people talk about it a bit more and maybe they won't because it's just, maybe it's a bit dicey to really speak about and everyone kind of gets their feelings but hurt. Um, another topic I wanted to speak about, about feelings being but hurt, is the topic of loyalty. Uh, it, it transpired, or I learned recently, actually, um, I didn't. I spoke. I didn't want to speak. I meant to speak about it um, another time, but I kind of didn't have time. But apparently, as the topic says here, um, Zero Seven Shake, um, the girl that's um, famous for the kind of breakout feature on Pusha T's an album on the track called Santeria, has uh, dropped her longtime manager and Cody, um, yes, Jules, which has been interesting, right? Because. Um, I didn't know this. I think uh, somebody um, just kind of threw out a question on Twitter and she, and yes, Jules fortunately kind of answered and kind of broke it down into this tweet, which I'll read here. I've got it here on the screen if you guys can check it out. Uh, and the screen and the, the tweet from yes, Jules reads the following. Apparently, I was only needed until she hit the big leagues. She fired me as soon as she got on Nas's album. People change. Or maybe she was never who I thought she was in the first place. One valuable lesson has been learned. I can't really trust nobody. Ironic, isn't it? So I guess it's 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 ironic because you know yes Jules has had a bit of a um a bit of a shaky time in hip hop right even though she does a lot more good than bad maybe maybe doesn't do any bad to be completely honest um if you don't know who yes Jules is she's kind of like a a bit of a hip hop personality and also a bit of a just an all round crave egg right she's done loads of events in Miami where she's kind of originally from I'm assuming um she's supported loads of underground artists she does the whole like um i forgot what the playlist is called on soundcloud that was very very that was very well known that kind of picked up from there and then from there she kind of uh, spinned off and made this kind of agency that she's got uh the one is it 1am thing that she's got the agency i'm not sure what the name was um she's kind of put, uh, really pushed the whole idea of ne never not working kind of consistently hustling loads of stuff about entrepreneurship really really encouraging young females in the industry to kind of get at it and really start chasing their dreams so a kind of a really good egg in general she's always in the mix when it comes to like putting events on with underground artists um and she's just always out there and about there but you know she's had loads of kind of um controversial um times happen in her career too from that tweet that she retweeted with a t-shirt with the n-word on it um the sex tape that leaked um loads of random shit happened right but she's been fortunate enough to kind of ride through that storm which has kind of shown that usually when people ride through those kind of things i think it's an indication that they're a good person if you're a shitty person when those things happen to you usually the community at large takes that as an opportunity to kind of like counsel you and just kind of close the door and not let you come back in again but i think the fact that she's been able to uh, resurrect her career and she seems like she's on the up and up you know just following her twitter account is fucking tiring right she's always doing things i think i'm always you know i get a little bit 
I wonder how she feels about it for her promotion because I always get a little bit cringy about promoting the stuff that I do. But she's always constantly tweeting her shit, retweeting that, putting out this. I'm there, I'm there, I'm here. Guest list is open. Send your email. On there. I mean, she's always telling you what she's doing. So you can tell by her Twitter feed that she's kind of, you know, she's active and she's taking part in the culture. So people have kind of opened her up with, uh, with um, open arms. But there is an idea of, of loyalty that comes in play when it's an artist, right? Because I know having followed a lot of um, comedians on podcasts and stuff, they speak about it quite often about, you know, the fact that some of them speak um, with a lot of um, glee in their voice and a lot of admiration that they've had the same manager for 27 years, let's say, right? And they, they believe in loyalty, the fact that this person backed them when they were nobody. They're not now going to, even though they've had their differences, they're not going to, they're not willing to turn around and fire that person because they wouldn't be what they're understanding. They understand that they wouldn't be where they are now without that person. And I get that. But there is, there is also such a thing as blind loyalty, right? When sometimes you're just loyal to somebody out of fault, right? We get that a lot. You have, you have that a lot with families, right? Where unfortunately you can't choose your family. And if you have a shitty family or you have people in your family that you don't like or who lie, steal and chill, you feel as if you kind of always have to have their back. But it's a loyalty that kind of inevitably always hurts you because you're the one that's getting hurt and you're just stuck to them because, you know, you happen to share the same blood. But sometimes people take that as a lesson and, and usually sometimes they'll say, you know what, I'm not going to let that happen again. So in my actual real life, if I have the opportunity to dump somebody because they're not doing what I want them to do or they, or they haven't shown me um, a good face or I don't feel as if they're being loyal back to me, I'm going to ditch them for somebody else. Now, I don't know what the story goes with the whole Zero Seven Shake, um, Yes, Jules thing. From reading between the lines or reading what uh, Zero Seven Shake, Zero Zero Seven Zero Shake's um, response on Twitter, it seemed as if like she's kind of arguing the point that um, they they kind of both riz at the same time. They kind of both kind of were prominent at the same time. You know, um, Yes, Jules helped Zero Seven Shake to get where she needed to get to. The whole signing on Good Music was a good look. Like, it was really amazing to see how happy yes Jules was that just seven, zero seven zero shake finally got or just to say shake shake finally got put on and was signed to good music so they kind of both were at the same time but it seemed as if yes Jules also her workload increased too right um they got she's got collaboration with puma that is kind of ongoing i'm assuming she must have loads of clients signing on with her services working consulting with different brands her kind of agency is popping up she's hiring more people so i'm assuming what just shaker's meaning is that you know she was getting busy and didn't necessarily have the time to dedicate her whole full resources to shake because back in the day when it was probably just a few of them running around town trying to you know get themselves put on she felt she had all the attention all the creative energy was kind of getting directed into her and you know by their very nature musicians especially as probably more so than comedians are quite selfish in that regard right they want to feel like they are the apple um in the person's eye right like they're that they're the prize it's like that's why some people get put off with record labels right the whole idea is that you're going to get lost in the mud especially if you're assigned to a record label that has two or three breakout stars you're going to be like the third or fourth priority when it comes to rollouts and stuff so you want to kind of feel like you're always a priority sometimes so maybe in that regard you know yes Jules was too busy and straight just feel like you know what you're not giving me attention i need i'm going to go somewhere else um but you know i don't know man how i feel about it because I'm I'm of the feeling that if I if I was a shake and I did come up from nothing and I kind of have was given the kind of look or the recognition primarily based on my on my own talent. Don't get me wrong, right? I'm a talented musician. I do the work work, but a lot of the background stuff that I'm sure yes, George was involved in and you know um, meetings and this and that. You can't you can't discount that, right? And I'm sh and I'm kind of going back to the whole interview with Ben and Bobby Hundreds on Hype Beast Radio, right? It's kind of stressed to me the importance of partnerships and how important it is to kind of have somebody in your corner who handles the stuff that you can't handle, right? And how, and even though, because sometimes when you know what you know, or you've got your domain of expertise, you can sometimes discount the other bits because you think the success is just coming from what you do because you know what you're doing, right? You're designing shit, you're making shit, you're going from a sketch to a real iteration, but the actual idea of putting it into stores, of getting money in or being paid on time at the end of the month, that's something that is a skill that shouldn't be overlooked, and it's something that I've kind of learned the hard way when I used to do my nights to promote stuff, right? There wasn't a clear delineation when I was partnering up with my, with my ex-friend that, you know, who, what the roles were or who was responsible for what. And then eventually that kind of relationship deteriorated because it wasn't a clear line of communication. And I'm sure even though Zero Shake probably feels like she needs a change, that was probably the relationship that she had with Jess Jules, right? As great as she is artistically, as great as she is creatively, the idea that you had somebody in your corner who's doing all the businessy stuff, all the kind of marketing stuff is super important, especially for somebody that's coming up 
that's just like an underground artist, right? Someone that no one really knows about. That's amazing to have like effectively like uh, your own bespoke marketing agency working just for you. Um, you know, I, I've always said this. I think I mentioned it to my brother the other day who's start, starting to make some music. It's like, I'd, I'd much rather you not make sub... Um, it's just my own opinion. I much rather he'd not make mediocre music and instead concentrate his, his efforts on just lending his services for free to artists, especially underground UK rap artists, and just kind of help them with promotion, help them with making flyers, help them to get on these, because my brother's got a podcast, help them to get on these podcasts, um, help them with touring, help them making YouTube videos, um, whatever it may be, um, posting stuff on social media. That that would that, that would serve the culture of the community better because that's stuff that they are doing as well, but it's taken away from their artistry, right? They need someone to just kind of just, uh, okay, let me make the song and give it to my brother and they can just like, he's the one that's responsible for kind of like getting it out there. And I sometimes feel like, that's something that's lost on some people but again we don't know the inner workings i don't know what the actual inner workings are this relationship i don't know what kind of crumbled to it but i kind of would hope if that was me and i was in that, that position i would be loyal to a fault i think so just because i think like you know you can't buy that I, that kind of relationship especially coming from the mud of like you know be, dealing with have you know that whole idea of like you've been with each other performing in venues with like seven people and, and now you're all of a sudden you're performing on the stage uh, with Pusha T or you're on Jimmy Kimmel with Pusha T that's amazing that's a, that's something that's that's a reward that you're never going to be able that's a um, that's a joy you're never going to be able to share with anybody else I remember Rocky mentioning it a few times about the whole that's why he misses ASAP Yam so much because he was the only one that got the journey he was there when they were just nothing when they had to like share food and shit remember when they were sleeping on each other couches so he's like he's just upset that he's not here to see how successful how big they are now to see like the fruits of their labor to see how much is to, to see that he was right that they were always going to be successful um yeah that's the only thing that I'm, I'm kind of a bit dubious about. i don't know exactly what they should be i don't know what happened but it's sad to kind of see that happening i guess maybe kind of you know may, it might be for the best you know sometimes you know staying with somebody just because you're loyal and the relationship isn't where it should be might be a, an error as well in that regard but i'd hope i'd be i'd be uh low to a fault but i saw that news and a bit bummed out by it but i guess you know maybe it's a less again maybe as Joe says it is a lesson learned for next time to kind of you know to know how to correct course for the future coming up but again i think for anyone out there who is contemplating starting a music career because you're seeing everyone making music hold off on it do you know what i mean do what yes george is doing get involved in the culture like kind of move be the mover and shaker behind the scenes sign people or not even sign just help somebody out not even signing like just be just do the just do the the hustle thing offer your services for free like hey i'll write the copy for your um album um your album notes right um i'll do the social media posting i'll do the seo stuff i'll help you out with facebook marketing um like do that kind of stuff like be of service to different artists and help the culture move forward i think that's a better way to kind of get yourself involved instead of being that the the person in front of the camera and inevitably if you do want to be in front of the camera and you happen to be an attractive girl like uh, yes jules it can happen as well you can be the the behind the scene person and you can also be someone that's in front of the camera that can also help that could also work but you could also just be the uh, the person behind the camera that no one really knows about that's just like i mean pulling all the strings that's also an important part of the story that no somebody overlooks but anyway that is an hour now. I was whizzed by. That was actually the Zing Show numbers episode number 90. I think that might be a good way to end it. You know, an entrepreneurial message for all my people out there. That's been episode number 90 of the Accident Zing Show. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, for more information on me and my DJ gigs and all of my other links on social media and stuff, because I I've, I've actually haven't been posting on social for a while, especially Instagram. I took a bit of a break from that in general to kind of concentrate on doing this stuff, which has been very handy, and I think it's kind of worked. And I started to myself back on it again, but it's not a big public declaration of like, oh, I'm quitting because I'm, oh, I need to do this, whatever. It's just, you know, use the tools, don't let the tools use you. That is what I'm doing at the moment. So... And if you want to follow me on social media or stuff, whatever, I'll be making a big comeback on Instagram very soon, probably in a couple of weeks, so you can check that out. But you can find all my social media links in the show notes, uh, link below in the description or there. Um, I'll be DJing on Friday on tap at Tap East. So it's the 24th at Tap East on Friday from 7 to 11. Come through Westport Stratford. Link will be in the description at accidentzinger.com com for my DJ dates. And then on Sunday, the 26th, I'm DJing at the Heathcote and Star for my other night called Labertees alongside my friend afro musa that should be fun too i'm playing from 5 to 11 but it goes on from 5 to 1 so if you're in the area and you want to hear me play some tunes mix, 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 mix in come through come through it shall be fun and also please support the t-shirt that i designed um i put it up on everpress 
It's a cool little website. You can support my campaign. Let me get up on here again before I close out this lovely podcast. You can support it here on there. It shall be good to help support all the DJs in the world out there. Support, support, support. I've got this t-shirt. You should check it out on Everpress. It's a great website where you can design t-shirts, make a little campaign. People can support you. So here's my tea. It's for all the DJs out there that like to DJ and like to step on the ones and twos. Support my t-shirt. There it is. It's got DJ here on the front and then it's got the CDJs and the CDM and the DJM mixer on the back. You can find a link to that too below to support that in the show description on audio and on the video. So check that out very, very soon. I should be having those printed very, very, very soon. Anyway, that's been Agustin Zing Show number 98. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to see you guys again next week. So enjoy your weekend. For those of you in London, enjoying the Bank Holiday weekend. If you're in Carnival on Monday and you happen to see my ugly mug around, say hi. I shall be there dancing and shaking and jiving. It should be a lot of fun. And I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.